Angelisha. I am running ten. I am running. Hundred meters. Hundred meters. Are you competing with, with with the others? Yes. So have you started already? Yes. One. The first round won. This and this. Oh, this guys won. Yes. Oh. Go one two start and go. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, they're running. Yeah. So they go they go getting that point then back. Yes. Wow. You trying as well? You running? Yes. <laughs> So which other group is going? This. I wanna see. I wanna this. see you guys run. But this guy has a ninja. Is he going to run? <laughs> yes. Go one, two, start and go. Today I thought I should take you around my neighborhood and get to discuss about what we think about Jamaica as Africa and to be specific as Kenyans as an African you grow up thinking everyone in that land is a Rasta one everyone has dreadlocks you grew up thinking that everyone in Jamaica listens to reggae yeah you grew up thinking everyone in Jamaica yeah, appreciates freedom. You know, anytime Bob Marley is singing about freedom, we connect freedom with Jamaica. Yeah? So anytime we're fighting for freedom, anytime we're protesting, especially when we're fighting the government, we always listen to reggae. You know? Anytime you are around... Uh, Kenya, you will, you will notice that we have some ghettos, some hood by the name Jamaica. And the people living in such hood, such ghettos, such neighborhoods, they are fond of dressing in Rasta colors. They are fond in using the Jamaican flag. In fact, we found someone erecting Jamaican flag at their, at their doorstep or in, inside their house. Yeah, they don't have a Kenyan flag in it. Yeah, you found someone hanging uh, the portrait of the Jamaican, Jamaican president in their house or in their shops, in their establishments. Yet they don't have the portrait of the Kenyan uh, president. Yeah. When you get to such neighborhoods, people love reggae so much. In fact, I grew up uh, hearing people sing about Trinidad. You know, we have some uh, Jamaican uh, artists who are fond of who are fond back then. They were fond of singing about the Jamaican uh, the Trinidad Carnival. In fact, we thought that we have been living thinking that Trinidad and Tobago is a village in Jamaica. So we never go to, to understand whether Trinidad is a country on its own or not. Yeah. In fact, I was so much surprised when I heard uh, Tigress talk about traveling to Trinidad. Then all of a sudden, she's showcasing about the carnival. The very famous Trinidad Carnival. That got me by surprise. So the time I started filming about Trinidad and react, reacting about the life in Trinidad, how guys they are love partying, you know, that was my first impression. People love partying, but I got to, to, to learn that as well. They work hard. It's only that they have a specific time. They have a time frame when um, they get to the street and party. The Trinidad Carnival, you know. If I'm not wrong, it starts in December, then ends in uh, February, 15th February, something like that. Uh. 
Look at this place. Wow. So, we get back. People living in such this neighborhood, the Jamaican neighborhoods in Africa, they love smoking weed. So the assumption, the assumption is that people living in Jamaica smoke weed that much. But I got to learn that they smoke weed than more than the way Jamaicans do it. In fact. Jamaica is a Christian country and these people don't really smoke that much you know they have the assumption that weed smoking is allowed in Jamaica, it's lawful it's not I got to learn that it's not, it's not lawful you're only, you're only allowed to have like two to three plants in your garden yeah, for personal use, not for sale. So whoever is in Africa and they think that weed smoking in Jamaica is lawful, it's not. Weed, uh, the soil of weed in Jamaica is not lawful. Yeah. Look at this place. So the plan is to take you around this neighborhood as we discuss about Jamaica that's it I once did a video about showcasing the neighborhood the Jamaican slum in Nairobi Kenya Jamaicans wound my neck they never wanted to be associated with a, a ghetto does it mean do, do we don't have a ghetto in Jamaica? In fact, since I did that video, I never wanted to repeat it. I never wanted to discuss more about it. I never did. I never even uploaded the second episode. Why? Jamaicans wanted nothing about me. They never wanted to be associated with this ghetto. But what they didn't, they need to understand is that I was doing this for the love of Jamaica. I was doing that to show the similarity between Kenya and Jamaica. To show how people in Kenya appreciate Jamaica. So if you guys allow me, I will still go to the street. I will still go to that ghetto and uh, do more videos about it. In fact, the <laughs> residents of that ghetto are still waiting for me. I took their contacts and they have been waiting for me since then. So here's someone uh, burning charcoal. They're cutting down trees to burn charcoals. Oh. That's how people are not conserving the environment. guys need to conserve the environment anytime you see someone uh, destroying the environment tell them please stop doing that please be friendly to the environment and the plan is to visit the Caribbean one day probably by next year I might Mark my way, I might visit the Caribbean. Either Jamaica, Trinidad, or the Bahamas. They are visa free, so visiting is easy. Yeah. So we have several people here taking, uh, looking after cattle. Those are goats and uh, sheep. That's how the, the, the neighborhood looks like. So, where I am, this is a rift valley. Yeah, it's a depression. 
So that's an escarpment. You see the escarpment going round. Yeah, yeah. So we start starting with this side. That's the size of Narok. On this side, we have Naivasha, Mai Mayu, then Ngong. Ngong is next to Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya. Meanwhile, I started before introducing myself. My name is Gossi Africa. I'm a traveler and a YouTuber based in Nairobi, Kenya. Listen, those beautiful sounds by the birds. So that's the fun side of being at this side. The good, the good, the good thing with being here. There is no pollution. Either air pollution, sound, yeah. No sewer lines here. In, in fact, people here don't understand what a sewer line is. No factories as, as well. Factories, factories. <laughs> How do you call it? Factories, yeah. So I'm just talking, taking a random walk. It's in the evening. And I wanted to flex a bit. Just walk. So I, I, I presume this path is there to, is leading to someone's house. So I don't need to go uh, past where those goats are. Just taking a random walk. When I started this channel, the focus was, the goal was uh, capture the moment. Whatever you do, whatever I do, I capture. So I used to travel a lot. So anytime I travel, I needed to capture anything I'm doing. I go to Mombasa, I need to capture the moment in uh, the coastal island. And that's how I found myself being be, being referred to as a YouTuber. The goal was not to be a YouTuber. The goal was not content creation. The goal was to save these videos on YouTube. Then I ended up gaining subscribers. Kindly subscribe. Take me to 10,000 subscribers. We are on our road to 10,000. Subscribe to the channel. Then share the link to your uh, neighborhood, to your community. Let everyone subscribe to this channel. Take me to 10,000. See the beautiful ships. Mwogo wa jangombe, jau ramba muiko, usituka ne wakunga. Now Zaziungalipo. So it's almost sunset. The sun is going down. I may, I'm unable to face the camera direct. Yeah, due to the sun. The sun rays. You hear the sounds of the ships? So it's just flexing. Walking around. Even anyway, I've never been to this point before. And I thought, why not? This is Africa. We have the freedom of movement. So, those some people you walk in their neighborhoods and they think you're going to save from them. <laughs> But the, the biggest enemy you can ever have is a human being, not, not an animal. Even if I saw a lion here or a cheetah, I can always fight with it. But dealing with a, with a human being is never easy. Yeah? Someone who is able to 
think about your next your next move yeah you know wrestling with a human being they can always tackle me better than the way a lion can I was taking, talking to a lady friend Then she was like Oh, I was fighting some guy Then I knew this guy um, Can never win over me Because I, I can always use any weapon around me I can use biros A biro can be a good weapon I can remove his eyes Oh, that's a lady <laughs> yeah. I know she's going to watch this video then my friend was like, you scaring me. <laughs> yeah, Black Geo was like, you scaring me. <laughs> but then subscribe to the Black Geo. Hmm? Shabby from the Black Geo was scared. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's fighting, man. How can you dare fight a man? A man is energetic, you have the muscles. Probably the techniques of fighting, let his own fight. But they, since I came to this neighborhood, I haven't seen an hospital. I haven't seen a school as well. It's not that kids don't go to school. They do. But the schools are so much distant. They are so far. And you know, the risk of going to a very distant school walking through the wilderness where we have animals, we have leopards, we have lions, cheetahs, hyenas, wow, we have buffaloes, all those dangerous animals, they're here in this wilderness. And that's why end time the Maasai people are looking after their cattle, their sheep, their goats. They always have weapons, just in case an, a, a dangerous animal invades. You have to fight. The worst scenario is losing an animal. Yeah, losing your animal. So you have to fight to defend your animals. When I was growing up, I was looking after large herds of cattle and sheep, just like the Maasai people. So I used to take them to the jungle, to the hills. Yeah. you know at the hills you, you have the risk of being attacked by the monkeys you have the big monkey the baboons so you need to fight them always make sure you have the the, the, the arrows yeah you have uh, a sword as well then what else yeah all kinds of weapons Wow. In my community, we were not exposed to using use of guns. So I never used to have guns. I only came to learn how to use them later. But not to attack people. That one is lost and she's looking for her mother. Ah. 
I'm quite sure in developed countries you can never find a ranch like this one. Every, everywhere, every place I've been turned to an urban center. It's, it's getting to a point when people will not be having uh, places to build uh, the bungalows. So people will be build, building apartments. My evening walk. We need to listen to our tarab a bit. Tarab. So I, I need you to have a taste of the Kenyan music. Taste of the Kenyan music, Kijiti. It's almost sunset. So the evening vibe. Have a good time. That's a song Kijiti by Biki Dude. A lady who died uh, 10 years ago. She died at the age of around 100. 100 yeah. And at, by the time she was dying, she still performed. She went on a performance, a live performance, a week before her death. Very energetic lady. Yay! If you like it, subscribe to my channel. Hey, hey, hey. I love Charab, I love Bango music. I love Calypso from Trinidad and Tobago. It has a many. It has a many. It has a many. Observe. I live your fine. Yaki GT. Oh, it's come again. Ah, I'm going to Basically, she's trying to say someone snatched their guest from them and returned them when they were already dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, whoever understands that song, please translate for us. What this game? So, they went to play a certain game. She's calling it po Polithi, Polithi something. Then she returned the, she returned the money was already dead. Mighty. Woo. Let me play another song by her. I, I'm only hoping that I'm not getting copyrighted. Uh, but I'm talking a lot. I don't know whether uh, they will catch up with me. Yeah, I can always know how to play this. I'm an accomplished content creator. It's becoming cold. We have a lot of wind in this place. So we have an, a very big hill somewhere there, the Ngong Hills. So you expect to have a breeze at this side.
<laughs> you love you love the beat. At times you listen to song and you enjoy everything about the song without even getting to hear what they saying. Just enjoy the beat. Ta -na -na -na. Uh, 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 uh. You love it? I'm, I'm moving to the next one. It's called Beru. Beru, Beru. You know, the Beru is uh, the male god. The Beru. The he god. So I don't know what the Beru in our terms what it means but let's get to here let's get to here for ma I really respected these uh, lady somers I, I, at one point I would love to disclose why I love this lady I have a special attachment to her so whoever thinks they can interview me and ask me why I love Bikidude I will disclose for me, I can't disclose this on my channel. <laughs> you have to forgive me for that. But I, I would love to disclose, disclose it at a time. So, though, so if I ever get famous and you really want to know my relationship with Big Edude, hit me up. I'll give the interview. If you think I'm famous enough to disclose this to you. Then it's not playing. And by, by there I'm headed to Tanzania in time. Now that Bikidude was from Tanzania, our neighboring country, I won't mind sharing anything, uh, the story with you. So whoever is in Tanga, whoever is in Salaam, I'll be at your neighborhood. Whoever is in Arusha, I'm headed there probably in two, three weeks. So I'll be glad to share with you my relationship with Bikidude. Why well, I love her. I see, remember the day she died, I was to travel to Mombasa. That was on the 3rd of June, the year was 2013. 2013. Listen. At some point, soil is deep, so I can never... Um, hmm. <laughs> Tell everything what what she's saying at some point. So someone will ask, ah, why can how comes you always remember when she died? It never gets out of your mind. Yeah, there is something special. I wanna disclose that very soon. Probably I disclose it in uh, while in Jerusalem, Arusha, or Tanga. Be ready for it. Kindly allow me to end the video here and whoever has not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. My name is Go See Africa. Goodbye.